his critique of the American dream then was referred to uh, the Nixon the Nixon era, right? So Nixon was this figure that represented this very righteous facade that was concealing uh, a very ruthless fight for power, dirty tricks, all this um, in moralism, right? <laughs> um, we mentioned before, you were saying before that uh, he was an immoralist uh, posing as a moralist, I mean Nixon. And, yeah. um, but there, there was this great facade and of course, in, in that critique, he reminds me of uh, many of other of my American heroes like Frank Zappa or Sylvia Plath or even David Lynch, right? So I don't know, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to know what you think about what the American dream is or what he's, he's really referring to, because probably you know more than me. And um, what is the American dream today and who is, because in, in a certain way, I think that these artists, for example, the artists I, I just mentioned, get very provocative and uh, you know, uh, get very extreme to safeguard that idea or that ideal, right? And I don't know who's doing that today and if artists are doing that today. So th those are a bunch of questions for you. <laughs> yeah, no, but it's uh, I, I, it's pretty clear what, what direction you want to go with that discussion um and and it's so true that that was such a big part of hunter's concern it's just even just this book that i've been reading lately is um gonzo papers volume two is you see more notes on the death of the american dream mm -hmm. and um obviously he was preoccupied with this idea of the, the death of the american dream and but he never stopped talking about it which meant also that he never stopped fighting for it and he obviously, if he really believed that it was totally dead without any chance of resuscitation, he would have, he would have stopped caring, I think. But um, what does that even mean? And, and it's, I mean, the American dream can mean diff different things to different people. I think the classic idea of the American dream is this land of opportunity. I think it's this idea that which many people still subscribe to this idea that in America, you can do anything you want. You can come from nowhere and rise to the top. And um, this social mobility, I think a huge part of the American dream is related to, you know, economic and social mobility, meaning the ability to change your situation and improve your situation drastically. And I do think that exists but it's definitely the exception to the rule. Um, I mean, I know people personally that were lucky enough to, and, and hardworking enough to, to start from nothing and, uh, you know, become very, very successful um, in their careers or whatever else they were trying to be successful in, absolutely. But, um, but honestly, uh, a huge, percentage of Americans are just oppressed by the horrible lack of social safety net in the country. I mean, I, I mean, I don't even know the statistic, but it's got to be a third of Americans who can't afford to go to the doctor, right? Wow. Yeah. I mean, I didn't go to the doctor personally for almost a decade um, because I couldn't afford health insurance. I was denied health insurance from pre-existing condition. And Fortunately, my sister became a doctor, so I could go visit her. Thank you, Amity. But um, <laughs> other than that, um, you know, there's just so many people completely left out of the system and of college. I couldn't go to university because I didn't have enough money. And, um, and uh, I wasn't quite uh, poor enough to, to or, or from a poor enough family to to get the financial aid, but by my family or myself could definitely not afford it. Um, just a long story short, education and healthcare are two of the biggest issues in America that leave people absolutely, you know, at a disadvantage, at a huge disadvantage. And, um, and for me, that's, those are two obstacles that the country has to overcome immediately to to revive any idea of American dream, 
and um and we'll see you know there's you know some talk of these i mean fortunately we did have people like bernie sanders uh who uh who got a, the message across pretty loud and clear to a lot of americans about how vital these kind of uh reforms were to 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 you know paving a, a better future for our country but um you know in the end where are we it's it's just a too little too late little steps little steps um and culturally speaking i think that um i think that um there are still um incredible and visionary thinkers and 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 artists and inventors and also entrepreneurs and i still think that you could never call the american dream dead there's always going to be sparks of life and there's always going to be some great innovations um but there's also as hunter was all too aware of 50 years ago and and making it all too clear in songs of the doomed of like that we are really you know fucked if we don't address some of these big issues and also in in a lot of these issues are centered around what happens in our government Absolutely. and um for all you Europeans uh, um, who may not realize, but the American government is basically pay to play. There's no limit on political contributions, pure and simple. Mm. If you pay enough money, you can tell the government what to do. And we're talking about the United States of America here. This is not some third world country. This is first world freaking disaster. Yeah. Anyway. No, no, you're you're completely right, and this is something that we didn't talk about, but it, it's also implicit in all of uh, Hunter S. Thompson's uh, political program, which is the uh, he's going against the perpetuation of power, you know, and that how uh, these uh, elites just are doing whatever they have to do. Not the whole system; it's a structural problem. The whole system is structured so that there is a permanent perpetuation of the same. Exactly. But anyway, anyway, because I want to ask you uh, a couple of questions about other things.